In this tutorial, we're going to show you how to import flat relief models to wrap around a column. We'll walk through the process of importing flat 3D models into a rotary session, and then we'll show you the toolpath setup to create the part that you can see here. So let's go to File, Close, and then we'll go and create a new file. So here we're working with a rotary job type. So here we need to specify the length and diameter of the cylinder that we're using. So in this case I'm going to go with 12 inches in length, 4 inches for the diameter. Z0 position, I'm going to put that to the cylinder axis. Uh, this is the most reliable choice as it's much harder for you to set your Z0 off the surface of your cylinder because that requires you to have a perfect circle. XY date and position, in my case I'm going to go with the lower left hand corner and then we need to specify the orientation for our cylinder. So this will really depend on your own machine setup. If you have a linear X axis and are wrapping the Y values, you'd select this option. Uh, if you had linear Y axis and wrapping the X values, then you'd choose this option here. In my case, uh, I have a linear X axis, so we're going to wrap the Y values. Uh, specify modeling resolution, we'll just go very high and then we could simply go ahead and press OK. So now we're in a job space that's defined by the settings that we entered in our rotary job setup form. Uh, we can see that the width of our part is 12 inches and the height is shown as 12.5664. So this is defined from the circumference of our cylinder uh, where we specified a 4 inch diameter and the software has basically unwrapped that for us. And everything that we do in the software is going to be calculated in a flat environment. And the only time that this output will change to rotary is when we use the post processor that has the ability to do that. But we are able to visualize um, the actual rotary here in the 3D view. And we can see that we have a depth of 2 inches, uh, and that's basically half of the 4 inch diameter that we specified. So now we're ready to import um, a relief model to apply to our wrapped job. So to do that, let's go into the modeling tab. We're going to use this option here to import a component or a 3D model. As the model that I'm about to import is third party software and it's an STL file. So I'm going to go into that option there. I'm going to locate my folder. So here's my project folder. We've got the floraldrop.stl file. Select that and then go ahead and press open. Now as this is a non-native file, the software will automatically open up the Orientate 3D model form and this allows us to set the model up before it's brought into the job and then convert it into a standard component. So here what we need to do is we need to orient and size the part so we can wrap the part correctly. So first off, at the top, we've got this option here, imported model type. Now the software's picked up on the fact that what we are using is a flat model. So this is basically like a relief model. It's the same as the clip art that we provide free with the software. And so the idea here is we're going to take a flat model and we're going to use it uh, for surface detail for decoration on a wrapped part. So we've got the flat model option there and we can see the flat model here in the 3D view like so. And this red box that you can see here represents our material, that being our cylinder as if it were unwrapped. And so the idea here is we're going to look at uh, some of the options within our form to alter the orientation, the rotation, and then look at scaling our model here to fit within our unwrapped material. And then we'll simply uh, bring that in as a standard component. So, looking at the initial orientation, I can see as it stands that is perfect, so I'm going to leave that set to the top there. And we could look at rotating our part, so we could go negative 90, negative 180, or plus 90, plus 180. In this case, I'm going to go plus 90. I don't need to alter the interactive rotation here, um, I'm happy with where that is. And then we can move on to model scaling. 
So here, all I'm going to do is look at altering uh, the x-axis. I'm going to make sure lock ratio is checked so it scales everything in proportion. And I'm just going to change the x here to 9. Okay, so it's made that uh, bigger along the x of the model. And then we could simply go ahead and then press OK and that will bring that in to our job as a standard component. Okay, and so the software is going to flag up this message and what it's basically telling us is that this is the first component that we've added to an empty model. So as of yet, we have no components in our job. And so the software is telling us that the modeling plane of our job will need to be adjusted to avoid distortion. Now we want to wrap our relief model to a surface and currently right now we don't have anything in place for our model to wrap around. So we're going to ask the software to adjust the modeling plane for us so that the imported component will appear on the surface of our model. So here we're going to go ahead and press yes. So what happens here is the software will adjust my modeling plane to accommodate my new components that it fits within my material. And we can see it wrapped on our cylinder. So if we just jump into the material setup form in the toolpaths tab, we'll just switch over there into the material setup. And we can see more clearly what the software has done to help us out here. So looking at this particular section of our material setup form, the model position in the material. So we can see, judging by the colour of the, our icon here, that our model is on the outermost surface of the cylinder. Um, and this model has a thickness of 0.5077. So let's just use the set option here just to round that down to 0.5 uh, just to make this a little bit easier to talk about. Okay, I'm going to make sure we have a gap of zero um, outside of the model. Now the Z height of the modeling plane is shown as one and a half inches. And so with the model thickness being half an inch, we have a total height of two inches, uh, which is equal to the radius of my cylinder. Or if you wanted to think of this in an unwrapped job, it would be the two inch thickness of my material. So let's just maximize the 3D view. I'm just going to switch off the material block visibility here. So when we said yes to the software adjusting our modeling plane, it's done so by making the modeling plane thickness equal to the radius of our cylinder minus the actual model thickness. Now, if I wanted to, I can adjust the position of my model within the actual cylinder. And we can do that by using the slider option, or we could look at specifying a gap outside of the model or a gap inside of the model. You can see, judging by the icon here, we now have a gap outside, then we have our model, and then we have a gap on the inside. And we can see the values for outside here, 0.3, and the gap inside is 1.2. And it's worth noting here that um, the more that you adjust the model position in the material where we're actually creating a larger gap outside of our model, uh, the more distorted that our model gets uh, because we have less surface area to wrap around the plane and so the model will distort slightly. Now if we adjust it so that there is no material in the centre, then we're going to see some very strange distortion, uh, which is what we'd see if we selected no in the message earlier. But we can control the model in plane here in this form. So I'm just going to revert that back to have a zero gap outside of the model and then we'll just cancel out of here and we'll just switch back over to our design tab. We'll put that in the Z view. And so once we've imported the model, we can see that we have a standard component here within our component tree. Uh, and then we could look at altering the composition if we wanted to. We could look at sizing it, scaling it, and so forth, as you would with any ordinary component. So let's just go ahead and tile our windows. So in the 2D view, I'm looking at this as if we are looking at the unwrapped part. And so here, I could take it, I could move it around 
around if I wanted to. And um, with every move, you can see it update in here in the 3D view. Uh, let's just undo that by using Control Z. I could also look at rotating my part. I could also scale it and so forth. So we can make all these changes uh, once we're in the software. Right then, so Control Z, Control Z. Just going to take that back to where it originally was. Um, and what I'd like to do here is I'd like to look at adding in a cove uh, to either side of our column. So to do that, I'm going to go into the Drawing tab. Simply use the Draw Polyline tool. I'm just going to snap to the edge of my job here, and just going to draw a line and snap to the bottom of our job there, like so. Right click to come out of the polyline tool and I'm going to take this line, use Control shift and then H on the keyboard to create a copy horizontally over here and so now we have everything ready for us to go and toolpath our part. So let's just go and switch over to the toolpaths tab so let's go into the material setup form to so check over the settings ensuring that they're safe and appropriate for what we're doing so here we basically want to make sure that what we put in here we replicate on our machine so the diameter is 4 inches XY datum we're going to have that in the lower left hand corner Z0 I'm going to set that to the centre of our cylinder model position and material I'm just going to make sure we have a very small gap um, on the outside of our model just to uh, ensure for any inconsistencies in that diameter uh, rapid Z gaps above the material make sure that they are safe and appropriate uh, along with the Z gap above your material also Okay, so here I'm just going to go ahead and press OK. Right then, so now we could go on and we could look at creating our first toolpath. So here we're going to look at running our 3D roughing toolpath. So let's go into the 3D roughing toolpath. So the first thing we're going to do is select a tool, so in this case I'm going to use a quarter inch end mill, check the settings ensuring that they're safe and appropriate uh, for the material and the machine that we are using. Uh, then we need to specify a machine and limit boundary, so I'm just going to go with the model boundary, so that's going to account for basically everything, uh, the actual component here along with the zero plane that we've got in there also. Okay, so then we move on to a boundary offset. Okay, we don't want an offset in this case. Machine allowance, we're going to leave that at 0 0.03. So this is uh, an imaginary thickness of extra skin that will be left uh, on the finished material so that we avoid chipping the finished part uh, on this pass. Uh, and then we move on to our roughing strategy. Okay, so we've got a Z level strategy where we could raster X uh, or raster Y. So um, raster and X will cut along the X axis before stepping over and this direction is very important uh, when doing a rotary setup. So when we apply the raster X option, the tool will cut along the X axis uh, and then there will be a short rotary move, uh, which is the equivalent of the step over and then it will basically raster back again. If we use the raster Y option, uh, what would happen then is that the toolpath was going in this direction and that will be the equivalent of the part spinning all the way around um, and then the tool stepping over in X and then again the part spinning all the way around again and so on. So it really depends on how you want to machine this. So for most people's setup you probably want to go and choose the raster X option. So then we can just give that a name, 3D Roughen, go ahead and press Calculate and the software is going to calculate that toolpath for us in which we can then go ahead and preview that. So you can see right here that the software has unwrapped our part as it's calculating the toolpath preview. So even though we are previewing this in a wrapped environment, um, now that the software has calculated the preview, the software still thinks of this as a flat three axis toolpath and it will be the compatible post processor that will exchange the Y values for the rotary axis movements. So we can see our part like so. 
Okay, so uh, now we've got our 3D roughing toolpath in place. What we can do is go and create our 3D finishing toolpath. So let's just close out there. We're going to go into the 3D finish toolpath. And then here we're going to specify a tool, so use the select option, go with an 8th inch ball nose in there. We're going to use the model boundary here, no offset, and we need to specify our area machine strategy. In this case we're going to go with a raster strategy. Now we need to specify an angle, so at 0 degrees this will cut along the x axis uh, before stepping over, uh, and then it will basically do a rotary move, and then which is the equivalent of a step over and then uh, the tool will go back along the x-axis and again there'll be a rotary move and it'll just raster back again. If we had 90 degrees in here uh, the toolpath would be going in this direction and that'll be the equivalent of the part spinning all the way around before the tool then stepping over in x where the part would spin around again. So here we're just going to go with zero degrees and this just really all depends on your part and your setup. So here we're just going to give this a name, we'll call that 3D Finish and then we'll go ahead and simply calculate that. So let's go ahead and preview that toolpath. So very nice, I like the way that, that looks. So if we just close out here. So next what we want to do is we want to apply the coves to these uh, vectors here. So we're going to take those cove vectors, uh, shift to select both of them, and here we're going to go into the profile toolpath form. So the start depth here we need to alter. Now we've already cut um, away at our model. We know our model thickness is 0.5, so we're going to start this also at 0.5. Then the cut depth we're just going to go down a quarter of an inch here. We can choose a tool. In this case, I'm going to go for a one inch ball nose. We could go ahead and press OK. We're going to machine on those vectors. Simply come down here, give that a name, call that profile, press calculate, and then we could go ahead and preview that toolpath. And there we have um, our finished part. So if we go ahead and maximize the 3D view, we could take a look at how our finished part will look when we come to cut that out on our CNC. So I like what we've got here, so at this stage I can safely say I'd like to go and save out those toolpaths to cut on my machine. So to do that we simply use the close option here, then we're going to select a toolpath, so I'm just going to show you one example for now, so I'll take the 3D rough in, go over to save toolpath, we can see that listed here, um, and then we need to choose an appropriate post processor. And so it's very important to note that the post processor has to support rotary moves. And this is the stage where the software is going to take what are essentially three axis calculated toolpaths and then convert them into rotary. And so the post processor has to support rotary and needs to be set up so it's configured correctly for what your rotary axis is. For example, uh, if I take a look at what I currently have, so I'm using a Mac. 3 post processor um, where I'm going to look at wrapping the Y to A option. Okay, so A is basically the typical designated G code for a rotary move. So you want to make sure that you're wrapping the correct axes, and you can see here we also have wrap X to A. In my case, I'm just going to go with the uh, Y to A there, and then I could just simply save the toolpath, save that out, and then take that over to my machine to cut this out. And then you do the same for the other toolpaths in your list. So let's just close out of the save toolpaths form. So that completes this tutorial on how to import flat 3D models into a rotary job. So let's go and save the project. So I'll go to File, Save As, and then we'll call this one uh, Importing Flat 3D Models for Wrapping. Press Save, and you can access that from your project folder.